The new iPhone season is here, and this is the best iPhone that you can currently buy, the 15 Pro Max. After a bit of time with the phone, I want to share some of the things I love about it and why you probably shouldn't buy it. Let me explain. The unboxing experience of these devices have been pretty much the same for a few years now, but the notable thing here is that these phones come with a braided USB-C cable, which is really nice to have. The only downside is that the cable included in the box is only USB 2.0, even for the Pro models, so if you need the fastest transfer and charging speeds, you'll need to find a different cable. Now, pretty instantly, I was impressed by the feel of the phone in hand due to its slightly redesigned edges and reduced weight, which is surprisingly noticeable. Apple did something super clever when designing the Pro models by using titanium for the band that goes around the edge of the phone. This effectively reduces the spread of the remaining weight away from the edges and into the center of the device. To put it more simply, it's basically the same as when a figure skater lifts their arms above their heads to spin faster, and the weight distribution of these Pro models is one of my favorite parts of the entire phone. The new natural titanium color looks mostly a silverish gray in person and is going to be a big hit this year, but I definitely recommend putting it in a case if the early drop tests are anything to go by. The good news for the 15 series of phones is that with the new rounded edge design, putting on a case is much easier than compared to the 14s. I plan to make a whole separate video soon on my favorite cases for the 15 series, but for now I'll be using some of the new cases from Nomad. They dropped some really nice leather options for those who love that patina look on their phone case, and my personal favorite is the sport case in this super clean white color. Now beyond the unboxing and accessories, there were a few key things that I wanted to test right off the bat with this new phone. One of the biggest issues when filming on an iPhone are the lens flares when shooting in a direct light, and even though they introduced a new coating on the lenses this year, the problem still persists in most conditions. Another issue that I had with last year's 14 Pro was that it had a reduced minimum focal distance on the main sensor compared to the 12 or 13 Pro due to the larger 48 megapixel sensor. This simply means if you get too close to an object, it'll automatically switch to the 0.5 lens, which is usually a reduction in image quality, and sadly, the 15 Pro Max behaves exactly the same as last year's phone. There are some big wins for this year's 15 Pro, however, and one of those is just how amazing the USB-C port can be. For example, you can easily charge your AirPods or even another phone by sharing power over wired connection for the first time ever in an iPhone. The 15 Pro models also support using an external SSD for direct video shooting, and there's even more. You can shoot directly to an SD card with an iPhone now, which I haven't seen too many people talk about, but this is where I think it's important to mention why I think most people should think really hard before buying this specific phone. The average consumer probably doesn't care about shooting directly to an SD card or what the minimum focal distance is. And while the 120 hertz display is something absolutely essential to someone like myself, I don't think most people who own an iPhone know what that is, and that's totally fine. In fact, some of the loudest people in my comments who I've seen complaining about the lack of 120 are people who exist in the Android ecosystem and aren't the ones buying these phones anyway. My point is that people who are actually buying and using these devices will know if they need the Pro features or not. The more I see of the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus this year, the more I'm realizing just how meaningful the upgrades are, especially for the Plus. The 48 megapixel sensor is a big leap forward, the dynamic island on every iPhone will hopefully bring way more dev support to it, and the A16 Bionic chip in it is almost as fast as the one in the 15 Pros. Apple made an absolute killer phone with the 15 Pro Max this year, and I'm certain it'll be an absolute powerhouse for just about anything I can throw at it, but I feel like I can say the same about the 15 Plus and for most people, that might just be the best option. I will be doing a full day in the life video with this new phone and have several new projects hitting the channel very soon. Thanks for watching, take care.